Hello, everybody joining the, uh, the webinar. Welcome to um, our test planning simplified uh, presentation. So um, I guess the, the kind of thinking behind the, the topic for this webinar is that, you know, I've, I've been a tester myself. Um, and I think as as the, the pace of delivery has um, evolved over time with, you know, agile and um, continuous delivery, um, testers are, are always in this situation where, you know, they've got to um, keep up with the, the pace of the, the delivery for their team, um, while at the same time, you know, trying to keep some kind of plan in mind and potentially even documented um, that's going to help them to guide their, their testing efforts for, you know, whatever it is that they're, they're working on. Um, in, in the old days when I um, first started testing um, a, a goodish number of years ago, we used to write huge test plans. I, I started working um, as a, a tester. My first um, sort of proper testing jobs were um, in uh, sort of public services in the, the UK, um, where you know it was uh, it was fairly regulated. So we we wrote lengthy um, test plan documentation, and then my next gig after that was working for a, a bank in Amsterdam. So again, you know, fairly heavily regulated with a, a big requirement for um, fairly detailed testing uh, test planning documentation. Um, but you know that that kind that level of documentation isn't um, a great option for lots of teams um, and testers. And over the course of my career, you know the the need for that level of documentation gradually diminished as the the teams I was working with, you know, got more and more agile, more and more continuous with their their delivery methodologies. And in my view. The documentation isn't really the important thing anyway. Um, the important thing to, to my mind is not the, the plan, the, the, the artifact, the artifact that, that you create, um, but it's the, the thinking that actually goes into the, the creation of that plan. So I asked, uh, I'm kind of asking the, the question um, for a, a given sprint or development cycle, how can you ensure that you've planned your testing with you know, the, the necessary level of rigor, um, but minimizing the, the amount of waste so that you've got confidence that you are doing your job um, as, as well as you can do as a tester. Um, and you know, potentially you've got some artifacts and documentation that can be shared um, if you need to um, with other people who might want to, to use or refer to them. People like me, a product manager. Uh, uh, I want to see um, what is gonna, gonna get tested, um, how it's gonna be tested and things like that to, to make sure that you know, when, we, when we deliver test rail releases, we're delivering quality. Um, and you know, as, as a result, I, I like to see you know, not a huge amount of testing documentation, but enough for me to, to get a sense of what it is um, that's going to be tested and, and how. So um, basically during this webinar, I'm going to try and give you some tools and some ideas for, for doing exactly that. I'm going to show you um, how, so I'm going to show you some ways that, that you can think through and plan your, uh, your testing efforts, sharing. Uh, I'm going to share some thought patterns or heuristics that can help to, to guide the process of creating um, and sharing a test plan. Um, I'm going to talk a, a little bit about some tools that, that can help you to keep that planning um, light, uh, lean, agile. Um, and I'm going to uh, talk a, a little bit at the end uh, about how you know test rail might fit into that picture as well. Um, but this is uh, I'm going to say up front, you know, as kind of a caveat, this is not going to be a particularly test rail focused webinar. I talk a little bit about test rail um, at the end, um, but you know, really, it's uh, it's about um, 
thinking about your test planning uh, and you know some ways to, to go about doing that that um, are, are quicker easier than you know creating um, lengthy test planning documents like you know um, some of us may have had to in the in the past or you know maybe still do so uh, and at the end we'll try and do some q a as well so test planning um, it's kind of difficult, I think, to, to speak um, in a, a webinar such as this one where we've got, you know, lots of people coming from lots of different situations. It's very difficult to, to speak in a way that's going to directly address uh, a specific situation or context because each of us works on a, a different product. You've got a different team. Um, you've got a particular kind of culture or way of doing things. Um, that's going to be informed and to some extent driven by um, a number of different variables um, and including um, more so these days with you know COVID and stuff the, the degree to which the members of your team are, are working in a, a co-located fashion or are working remotely. So with that in mind I'm going to speak fairly generally um, about the, the thought processes behind creating a, a test plan, behind thinking about the, the plan of your testing, rather than getting into the, the specifics of how it might look um, for a particular you know, development methodology or a particular technology stack. So a useful heuristic device that I found that um, has helped me when thinking uh, about my test plan um, is just to think about the, the five W's. What, where, who, why, and when. Um, and actually there's six, because I like to add how in there as well. And probably from a, a test planning perspective, that's kind of a, a necessity. Um, so I'm just gonna run through those. Um, what it, uh, relates to what will and won't be tested, what is the, uh, the scope of your testing, what features, functions, integrations, and you know, systems need to, to be included in the, the scope of your testing effort. Remembering, of course, that it's important to identify what um, won't be tested as well, um, so that you know, there's no surprises further on down the line. I think the, the what um, generally during a, a sort of test planning um, type exercise could be as big or as small as it needs to be, depending on you know, the, the context of whatever it is you're planning. So if you're applying this, this kind of approach, this thought pattern at the, the micro level, for example, then it could be the, the specific set of cases for something as small as a specific function in your code which could then be implemented as unit tests so that's you know right down at the micro level but equally you know at the kind of macro level it could be as big as all of the testing ideas um, for all of the components of an integrated system or you know a suite of microservices or whatever it is um, that you're working on and that you need to think about a test plan for. Um, the, the what um, in the, the five plus one W's is you know, entirely context dependent, um, but it's basically a place to, to start thinking about the, the scope of your testing, what, what you will and what you won't test. Um, the where where is your testing going to take place? Um, do you need some specific environments set up in order to carry out your testing work? Do you need some specific data on hand or loaded into your environment in order to, uh, to, to carry out your testing? Um, you know, often this is a, a fundamental question. I'll talk a, a little bit about some uh, testing that I'm doing at the moment later, um, but I've spent probably in the region of uh, two or three hours over the last couple of days working with one of 
I had developers just, you know, kind of getting an environment set up um, so that I can carry out that testing in the first place. So this is a, a kind of fundamental thing. Um, and where is uh, is going to prompt you to, to think about it? The where of your testing um, is your opportunity to consider um, those specific sort of environmental constraints that are going to play a role in your testing. Um, and also, you know, given the um, remote nature of how um, a lot of us are, are working at the minute, you see I'm at home in, in my office here, many of us are, are working from home and remotely, um, it's worth thinking about whether there are maybe some geographic or um, other constraints uh, around the, the where of your testing, you know, maybe time zones play a part as well. Um, who's going to test it? So, you know, depending on your organization or your team size, this might be more or less relevant to you. Um, if you're a lone tester, for example, you might think that this is kind of irrelevant, that you're the one going to be the, doing the testing anyway. Um, I think Either way, whether you're uh, a lone tester or whether you're working as, as part of a, a team or a squad of testers, um, this is uh, an important question to uh, consider. It's a useful prompt to get you thinking about who um, might be responsible or who um, might further help you out with some um, different testing types or activities that, that you want to apply. Um, what testing are the developers carrying out, for example? Um, what testing should they be carrying out? Um, and how should that testing be measured? Who else can uh, maybe support the, the testing effort? How involved is the, uh, the product owner or the, the product manager, if you have one? I like to get pretty involved in the testing. Maybe your product owner or manager doesn't. Maybe there's some other people um, that you can think about drawing into your testing efforts um, by using a, a bug bash, for example, you know, having, having some kind of um, party atmosphere uh, around the testing or, you know, dog fooding or drinking our own champagne, as, uh, as we prefer to, to call it here, um, actually using the, the product. Um, and testing it out as part of your normal sort of business activities. Um, what about your customers? Um, can you do some form of beta testing or some other testing in production? Um, so I, I treat the who question as a, a prompt to kind of get me thinking about all of the other people who could or maybe should be involved in the, the testing effort, um, whether or not they're in my you know, di direct reporting line. Um, in my view, um, and hopefully this is uh, something shared by all of you on the call, everybody is responsible for, for quality. So let's use the, the who question to, to think about um, who else can be involved in your testing efforts. The when, when does it need testing? When does testing need to be finished? What are the, the implications of any other time constraints on the testing scope? Can you do everything that is required in the, uh, let me just turn my notifications off here. Whoops, you're gonna allow me to. How do I turn on do not disturb? There we go. Let's turn those off, all right. Where was I, when? Uh, yeah, so um, can you do everything um, that is needed in the time available? Um, what about the availability of people, systems, environments, that kind of stuff? Um, another uh, really good when prompt is, you know, are there some tests that need to be run over long periods of time? Um, I've done a lot of performance testing in the past. You know, sometimes, sometimes those tests take a while. You might have a, a long running performance test or you might have like a, a soak test that, that's just running for, for days looking for kind of memory leaks and things like that. How are those things going to be managed? Um, there are other sort of things that, that might creep into your uh, test plan if, if you're um, 
focusing on you know maybe a, a bigger system um, batch processing and, and things like that certainly when you're you're talking about some um, you know CRM systems or finance systems and things like that those those kind of um, operations be, become a, a factor in your testing activities so yeah I mean in the same way as the other W questions I use when to, to prompt thinking about time um, as it relates to any of the, the testing activities I need to carry out. Arguably the, the most important question of all, why? Why does this testing even need to be carried out? What information are we actually looking to expose by carrying out these tests um, in, in the way that, that we're, we've chosen to perform them? Um, why have we chosen to, to carry out this set of tests and you know not some other tests that we could also perform? Um, what are the, the risks that we're aiming to, to expose um, by carrying out our, our testing? Um, I think the, the why is another fundamental question um, and it's something that as you think about it um, and think deeply about it um, will help you to, to guide um, a lot of your other decision making as well, um, both while you're um, planning your testing and then later on as you're executing on it, keeping the, the why um, in mind throughout um, your, your testing um, is, uh, is, is really important, I think. And then once you've made some headway, with um, all of those other questions, the, the five Y's, uh, the five W's rather, then you're going to be in a, a good position to, to start trying to answer the other W, the, the how, how you're going to perform your testing. And I think this should, um, to a large extent, be informed by the answers to all of the, the previous W questions. Um, the how kind of constitutes your approach to the testing that you want to, to perform. And I, although I don't think there's any specific order um, intended or implied uh, about how you go about answering these questions, there's, there's no specific sequence uh, that in which you need to answer them. Um, if, if you have you know, made a, a stab at answering the, uh, the other questions first, um, then you know you, that information is is going to help to to define how you actually want to perform your testing. So ideally, you would know who's available, who's got the required skills, who's got the knowledge um, you need in order to carry out your testing. You know what it is you're testing. You know when the testing needs to take place. Um, and where, if that's an important factor in terms of environments and things like that. The why, hopefully, is giving you some insight as to the, the actual risks that you're testing for, the information that you're seeking to, to provide your stakeholders, um, and what, what the priorities are as well, what's, what's important to your stakeholders, what's important to your business. And then the how is the implementation or the application of all of those strategic elements. You're turning them into a set of specific tactical activities. Often those activities are, are captured in the form of test cases, um, testing sessions, testing ideas, um, and perhaps testing code. Your how will help to determine and define which um, combination, which blend of those activities is going to be the right one for your context. So the five W's is a, a model um, that journalists and you know lots of other professions as well um, consider as being the, uh, the basics uh, of uh, an information gathering exercise whose answers constitute a complete story on the, uh, the subject at hand. Um, I found that 
quote on the uh, the internet somewhere when I was uh, uh, pulling together this webinar, but then forgot where it came from. So source unknown on that one, unfortunately. Um, but I think it speaks to the point that as testers, um, we are um, our our mandate is to try and uncover um, the 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 truth of the the thing that we're testing. Um, to illuminate the the story of our product, um, and I, you know I'm I'm drawing from um, James Barks and Michael Bolton's sort of rapid software testing um, lessons here. They talk uh, a lot about um, reporting on testing as you know being the uh, a, a, as the the story of your your testing, the story of the the product and the the story um, of the the testing. That you carried out, um, uh, and then communicating that story um, to your stakeholders. So, um, to the extent that you know, telling a story of um, your your testing effort, telling a story of the the results of your testing, and using that story to inform decisions about the quality of the the thing that you're you know trying to release or ship. Um, this. Uh, this heuristic, the, the five plus one W's, is a, a relatively useful one. As an aside, and you know, in case you're interested or maybe a little bit skeptical um, to uh, learn how the, the five W's kind of correlates with a more formal testing approach, a test, a test planning document, um, I think it does okay. Um, as the, the mind map here kind of demonstrates the, the what, who, where, when, why, and how questions cover all of the, the major elements of, um, of a formal test plan document, such as the, the one um, defined by the uh, IEEE 829 test plan um, structure definition. Uh, except for the uh, the test plan identifier, which is just kind of the the, the name of the the document anyway, the idea of the document. So I don't think that's too much of an issue. Um, so you know, I I think it's a uh, it's a useful heuristic to to get you thinking about all of these things, and hopefully um, I've covered the the majority of them as I've been talking. Um, the objective of this webinar, you know, as, as I mentioned at the beginning, is not to, to define test plans using such a, a heavy weight approach as this uh, IE 829 structure. Um, what I'm trying to do here is to, to give you some tools which you can use to, to guide your the thinking about your test plan in a, a leaner, simpler fashion. So the five W's is one of them. Hopefully it gives you a heuristic you can use to, to kind of Jump start your uh, the thinking uh, uh, about your test planning um, in a, a future project sometime soon, or even your current one. Um, conveniently for me, this mind map also serves as a, a useful segue into the next tool. Mind maps. I love mind maps, um, as most of my colleagues will probably uh, attest to. Um, they are my go-to tool for basically any kind of brainstorming or, you know, deep thinking exercise. I use them more or less every day to, to map out roadmaps, um, stories, requirements for test run. Um, I use them to explore different ideas and concepts. Uh, I've used them extensively in the, the past for test planning activities um, and I even used uh, a, a mind map when planning this webinar as you can see in this slightly contrived example on the, the slide here the uh, the actual mind map didn't really look like that uh, but it could have done um, as a, a creative and dare I say fun way of uh, gathering together your testing ideas around a central theme, I think my maps are an invaluable tool. And there's lots of other testers that would agree with that. So you can see a few of them here, Elizabeth Zagroba, Thomas Bonnet, 
uh, Nishi Grover Garg. So there's a, there's a few um, articles you can go and look at there. Um, I've written about mind maps in the past um, on my blog. Uh, unfortunately, in my recent migration, I seem to have lost a few of them, but uh, I can um, I can go through lots of examples and, and sort of pro tips uh, about how to use mind maps to plan out your testing. Um, and I, I will share a few examples. Um, but I, I think it's important to, to say up front that there's no wrong way to, to create a mind map. A mind map does exactly what it says on the tin. It, it maps the, the content of your mind. It maps out your thinking. Um, so you shouldn't ever be concerned about how it looks or what anyone else has to, to say about it. It's primarily a tool for you to, to discover and document your thoughts. So um, the next few slides are, are going to contain a few mind maps, but they're, they're polished versions that I have crafted um, for this presentation. It's not, you know, how, how things generally look in, in practice. Um, so uh, in terms of uh, a mind mapping approach, here's how I kind of a, approach a test plan in mind map form. Um, the, the central node, I think, would generally sort of constitute the, the why, um, the outcome that I'm looking to uh, accomplish from my testing, um, the, uh, the objective, and it kind of forms the, the locus of the, uh, the testing mind map. Um, and this uh, this is an example that I kind of created um, off the, the back of some testing that, that I need to do at the moment. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to use this in a, a couple of examples. But from this this sort of central why point, then you can start creating the, the branches for the uh, the other sort of key components of your test plan. So the testing scope or the the what the what are you going to address with your testing and what are you not going to address as well so you can see you know i've got the, the things i'm going to test the things i'm not going to test there the time scale of your testing when's it going to start and finish uh oops so the uh the when um who's going to do the testing and what will they need to to do it with uh the who so that's me there um, and, you know, information uh, about your testing approach. Um, so for this, uh, this particular example, I'm going to use um, exploratory sessions um, and they're going to correlate quite strongly with the requirements that I specified for the, uh, the stuff that I want to test. Um, it's, uh, it's a good idea to capture any specific risks or assumptions that you might have identified uh, along the way as well. I haven't got any examples of those on here, I'm sorry to say. Um, once you've created those branches, then you can start to drill down further into the, the specifics as necessary, and I'll show you that in a few moments. For the, for the scope, um, quite often, you know, I, I sort of start from a, a requirements point of view, um, the, the features or the, the stories uh, as, you know, being the, the kind of scope of my testing um, and then sort of drill down into to specific ideas for, for testing those things. I'll show you some examples of that as well. Um, And then I think really it's just a, a matter of sort of fleshing out all of the uh, the nodes um, on your mind map until um, you've got enough detail on it. Really, I mean, I think one of the the things about mind maps is is that they can grow quite large, as you'll you'll see in a moment. Um, but I mean, you're always going to start with uh, a central point. Um, and ideally, you know, you, you can start off with um, these uh, initial branches using the, the, five, the five W's, as I've already described, to, to sort of um, hone in on some of the areas of your testing um, and, and just kind of grow it out from there. And as I mentioned, 
This example is uh, a little bit simplistic, it's a little bit contrived. Um, I just knock this together quickly, uh, like I say, based on some testing that, that I'm going to do or am doing at the moment. Um, so to give you, I think, the next slide. Yeah, so my maps can get considerably more complex. So this is an example of an actual test plan um, that I created for uh, a UAT testing project um, some time ago. Um, it was spread out across a number of different systems, um, organizational departments, um, lots of business testers as well. Um, it was it was created um, collaboratively and it served as a, a reference point for the, the testing scope um, for certain phases of the, the project. It's not something that, that we use for everything, but it, it did um, serve a useful purpose at a, a particular point in time. And importantly, I think it was it was created collaboratively. Uh, I, I might have already said that, but I think this is this is kind of a, a key point, and it's uh, one of the the real values of of using mind maps or um, a form of light test planning documentation um, is that you know you can use it in a, a collaborative fashion. Um, when you when you work on a, a mind map collaboratively with other members of your team maybe in a, a workshop style discussion um, during sprint planning, for example, or you know something like that. Giving everybody the opportunity to pitch in um, with their thoughts and ideas um, is incredibly valuable. Um, using mind mapping um, to, to plan out your testing in this way can, can be a really good visual way of describing what it is that, that you're, you need to do um, so that everybody can see and contribute to the, the plan. And when everybody can see it and when everybody can contribute to it and you know kind of feedback on it, um, then that increases the, the likelihood that you're going to have everybody's support as you come to, to start implementing your test plan. Um, so moving off of the uh, mind maps for a few moments, um, another sort of similar light test planning approach that, that you can um, try out is the, the single page test document. In terms of content, you'll probably find that taking this approach covers the, the same kind of ground as using a mind map. Um, some people don't like mind maps. I don't. I don't get it. I love them, but hey, courses for courses. Um, some people find them a bit confusing, or you know, otherwise difficult to to get their heads around. And using a, a kind of one-page document like this um, can help you sort of overcome that objection to to using a, a simpler you know format for your test plan. Um, so. The scope of your document and the, the sequence of steps uh, to, to be followed in this uh, one page test plan document is, you know, pretty, pretty similar to the stuff that I've already described. So, you know, you're going to go through a process of identifying the questions to be answered or to be addressed by your test plan, remembering the, the five W's, as, as you can see here. Um, and, you know, you're going to end up with something that, that might look a, a little bit like this. So this is um, borrowed from Lisa Crispin's and Janet Gregory's Agile Testing book. Um, so, I mean, you're looking to, to capture all of the, the most important information about your test plan on your document. You know, keep it keeping it down to, to sort of bullet point form, but providing additional information as needed. So if you need diagrams or you know tables or other things, you might want to link to those artifacts. 
from your uh, your your one page document. Probably, if you do give this a try, you will discover that your test plan doesn't quite fit onto one page. Um, and you know, my advice here: don't worry about it. So long as the intent, I think, is to minimise the amount of superfluous information, all of the the gump uh, that you might find in in one of those IEE eight two nine type documents, um, then you know you'll probably be fine. the The intent here is to to provide the uh, information at the level necessary for the the people that that want to see that information. Um, another uh, pro tip I think is to you know maybe use something a, a little bit lighter than Word or Google Docs or you know the the, the more sort of heavyweight um, word processing um, software. You know maybe just use Notepad or text editor, uh, some other text editor, um, and and some markup to to write your test plan in. Uh, rather than Google Docs to, to you know further focus the the mind on you know keeping your test plan nice and simple and lean. Um, and again, I I found this quite a good way to facilitate sort of collaborative test planning as well um, by just getting everybody into a room um, either virtually or um, you know using Zoom or something like that or physically when you know COVID goes away. Um, and you can project or share the the document that you're working on, working on, and and write it as as you're collaborating on it. Capture the ideas of your entire team um, and all of your your stakeholders in the process, um, and reflect their thoughts back to them as words on the the page. Again, you know, I think this can be a, a really valuable approach and a good way. Uh, of getting buy-in where when you need it for you know the, the 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 testing work that you need to do. Um, another quick iteration on the uh, the same line of thought is the testing canvas. Um, honestly, I'd never been a, a huge fan of canvases until fairly recently, um, but you know I've I've used one or two for for some work that I was doing and. It's, they seem to work pretty well, so um, probably the, the same kind of approach works for testing. Um, on the assumption that you know you've got a fairly well-defined set of sections for your test plan in Canvas, um, so you can see there's a, a few examples here. Then you know following a, a similar kind of collaborative uh, approach to your test planning um, is you know pretty doable. Um, so there's uh, there's a few examples here. There's this uh, usability um, test plan canvas um, from Dr. David Travis. Um, there's the uh, the software testing canvas um, from Phil Robson, and the uh, the test automation um, canvas as well um, from the. Uh, uh, well, from Kat Katrina Clokey, who's, uh, who's obviously well known in testing circles. Um, and again, the key benefit of following this kind of approach is to provide a, a good mechanism for people to collaborate on the test planning. So you could do this in a, a few different ways, depending on what works best for your team. Um, you could use a meeting room with a, a whiteboard to create, you know, draw out the sections and use post it notes for all of the activities. Um, you could use a spreadsheet um, and you know um, draw uh, have have this information on there. Um, there's some other tools that, that you can use to to use similar kind of stuff. So I've been using um, Miro uh, a little bit recently. That's quite good. Um, Trello's uh, another good example. So testing canvases. Okay, so I'm going to talk uh, just a little bit about Testrel. Um, I think you know one of the things that probably might have occurred to you as as I've been talking is that you know the the sort of test planning approaches that I've mentioned thus far are, are not particularly repeatable. They lead to kind of throwaway documentation, um, which is absolutely fine if 
what you plan on doing, creating a document, using it to the extent it's needed, and then throwing it away. But if you need to, to reuse some of the, uh, the, the testing artifacts that, that you've um, created as a, as a result of going through this process, then you know, they, they might not end up in the, the most convenient of formats. Uh, my maps can be you know, a little bit difficult to go back to once some time has passed. Uh, and one page test plans and test canvases are okay as far as they go, um, but they're, they're pretty high level. They'll give you an overview as to you know, what, how, uh, when, uh, and all of those things, but not necessarily the, the fine details. And for those, you need to start you know, drilling down into actual test cases or test ideas or test sessions, depending on you know, how you prefer to think about those things. And to the extent that you need to um, repeat or report on those things, then you know, some additional tooling is, is likely to, to become valuable to you. Um, so in keeping with the, uh, the test planning simplified theme, um, test planning in Test Drought is very simple. Um, and can complement some of the things that I've already talked about. So by way of an example, if I use a, a mind map to create my test cases, then there's a good chance I can export those ideas into a, a spreadsheet, which I can then upload into Test Trail, either by you know, copying and pasting or by direct export, depending on the, the tool that I'm using. So I use uh, XMind a lot. Um, that's not an endorsement, it's just my preferred tool. Um, so here's a, a mind map that I prepared earlier. Again, you know, it's a little bit tidied up. Don't worry about how it looks too much. It's just kind of an expansion on um, some of the stuff I, I showed you earlier. So it's it's got the, the how, I'm going to do some exploratory testing. It's got the when, I need to do it as soon as possible. It's got the who. Um, which is me. Ideally, this should be sort of resources. So um, I might add that I need to, to do some environment setup. Um, I mentioned I've been spending some time with one of our developers. This was, this was something I missed off my original plan. So I might add some information around that. I've expanded on the, the where um, a little bit as well. Um, so I'm going to test locally. Um, I need to do that on Windows, I need to do that on a Unix-based environment, and I need to do that in a, a sort of staging environment as well. And I've added some more information about why I'm doing the testing in the first place. And, you know, this is, this is kind of product manager thinking, so I want to make sure everything's been delivered that I asked for, that it looks and works correctly. And, you know, I need to, to do some marketing stuff to, to keep our marketing manager happy who's on the call hey matt um so the bigger the bigger piece of this work is um the the what so i've expanded that out with lots of uh, test ideas here and then if i want to you know i can in xmind i can just do uh, an export to a, a csv file i'm not going to go through that whole process because you know that take a, a little while and i'm Starting to run a little bit short on time, um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna end up with a CSV, and then you know probably I'm gonna massage that CSV um, file a little bit so that it's in a, a format that looks a, a little bit tidier uh, and that can be imported into Test Drill fairly easily. Um, just a, a couple of things to to mention while I'm looking at this. Um, Probably I'm, I'm preaching to the, the choir a little bit. I certainly hope I am. Um, I like to, to see you know, estimates and prioritization whenever I'm thinking about a test plan. Um, those are, are things that you know, could be added um, at, at an intermediate stage, so in your CSV or your Excel file and then imported into TestRail, or they can be added um, once you've imported all your test cases. They, you, know, you can do this in TestRail as well. I always like to see some kind of priority assigned to test cases um, and estimates wherever possible. Um, these are obviously pretty vague, you know, 10 minutes for each test. I don't, 
I don't know how this is how long this is actually going to take so it's just kind of a guesstimate um, but I think those things are, are really handy so that when you you know when things come to a crunch and you have to pick and choose which tests you're going to run um, then being able to, to make those selections based on a sense of priority um, and a sense of how long things are going to take um, can be incredibly helpful. Other thing to mention is, you know, references uh, are obviously really helpful as well. Um, so you can use these to, to trace back to specific requirements um, and those may be held in, you know, an external tool. Um, Assembler or you know Jira or Trello or something like that. Um, you can use uh, your your references fields here to um, populate uh, to to um, correlate your tests with uh, uh, specific requirements. So in any event, once once you've got all of this into the the format that you want here, then you can um, import it into Test Rail. So you do that by just going to your test cases here. Uh, clicking the import cases button. That's interesting. Why isn't that button showing? Uh, anyway, um, so I would go to my file here. Um, so you can see that's been uploaded successfully. You don't need to worry about any of the, those fields. Um, and then just kind of map the stuff across. So this is all fairly straightforward. Title is title, section is section, assignee is actually the user. We've got the estimate in there. We've got references, although those weren't used. Template, I don't need to worry about that. Type is type, priority is priority. So that's done. And then just a couple of quick checks to make sure everything looks how it should do. So user is going to use, assignee is going to user, uh, type is type, priority is correct priorities, click next. And then we can see a quick preview of what that looks like. Click on the import button. <clears throat> and hey presto, we've got all of those test cases. And then, you know, that, Having those in test route is, is going to give me the ability to um, start creating plans um, around those test cases. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to call this acceptance testing and I'm going to leverage um, test routes, oh, test routes configurations capability to um, define the platforms that I want to test against. Um, so I wanted to do Unix, I wanted to do Windows, and I wanted to do staging. So now I can select all of those. TestRail is going to automatically create those runs for me. Um, and then it's just a matter of selecting, you know, if I want to further sort of um, filter uh, what tests I'm actually going to run against those specific environments, um, then I can do that here. So um, for this one, this is kind of my, uh, I'm going to do this on my MacBook. So I'm just going to select all for that one. So I want to run all tests locally. Um, and then for Windows, I'm going to just cherry pick the highest priority tests by applying a filter. Um, and I'm going to do the, the same thing for staging as well. So that's just going to use the, the high priority tests as well. And then I've got my test plan. I've got my runs in it. I'm ready to start testing. Um, and obviously, these are all now reusable test cases um, that uh, I can uh, add further information to or rerun or, you know, report on um, and leverage, you know, all of the uh, the powerful features that the test route provides to you. <coughs> My voice is starting to go a bit croaky, so that must mean we're approaching the end of the webinar. Okay, so just to, um, whoops, let's switch back to my slides. Uh, there we go. 
All right, another mind map. Um, so yeah, just to, just to summarize then, we've talked uh, a bit about um, some tools that we can use to try and make test planning faster, leaner, um, simpler. One of those tools is to use the, the five plus one Ws uh, to um, you know, think through your test planning efforts. To, to kind of structure your planning or, uh, or at least to, to kind of jump start it around the what, when, the who, the where, the why and the how of your, um, your project or your, your product. And there's a, a few other tools that you can use for your test planning as well. And we've talked about a few of them. So I'm a big fan of mind maps, as we saw. Um, but single page uh, test plans and canvases are other options that can be used as well. Um, and I showed you how you can take the results of those lean sort of simple test planning techniques um, and put them into test rail using the, the import feature um, so that you're ready to, to start uh, performing some, uh, some testing and, and reporting on it as well.